Welcome to Butterflies of the Biosphere. I'm Dr. Dan Danahart, and with me now I've got Jamie Burston, who's a species champion for the Purple Hair Streak Butterfly. Jamie, it's quite recent, isn't it, that you've become a species champion? In fact, I was at the committee meeting where that discussion was made about whether or not it'd be a good idea for you to do it, and I, I know there was overwhelming support for that, uh, that proposition. Partly, I think, because of your enthusiasm. This is, you might be new species uh, uh, champion, but, but you haven't been doing, no, how can I put this? Your, your passion has been around for a long time, hasn't it? Could you tell me about that? Yeah, uh, my first uh, experience with Purple Hair Streak was back in 2010, and I witnessed a female down on Hempagrimony on the ground, and at the time I didn't actually realise how a rare occurrence it was. To actually, I was actually quite privileged to see such a sight. I think you're absolutely right, and, and I think that's the other reason why at, uh, at the committee meeting people were really keen for you to take on this role, because although it's probably quite a common butterfly, it's quite a secretive butterfly, isn't it? Yeah, very what, much so. I mean, uh, what can you tell us about that? Uh, well, most of the time they spend uh, most of the section of the day up in the canopy of the oaks, uh, either taking in sap or from aphids or basking or later in the day around in the afternoon that they normally have aerial combat. Wow that must be really quite something to see aerial combat. Yeah. Um, but anyway it's midwinter so what do we expect to see here? Eggs. Eggs yeah well yeah. I've just been down with Richard Roebuck at Ditching Common and we've been very lucky in that we saw um, uh, we saw brown hair streak eggs. Here I think it's going to be a little bit difficult, different, isn't it? Because brown hair streaks are on, on small bits of black form. What are we looking at here? We're looking at, we're looking at eggs on the terminal and auxiliary oak buds. Right, OK. And on the whole have, tree? Uh, they, can, they can be laid at any height on, on the tree, but there are occasions where they do, the females do descend lower to lay eggs. Great. Well, let's go and have a look and see what we can find. OK. Well, Jamie, we're now at a rather large tree. It does stand out in the landscape. Uh, is there any particular reason why you brought me here? Yeah, it's the master oak tree and as such, actual females prefer trees that are slightly isolated, that are kind of in the open but are sheltered from the wind, but receive full sun, sunshine throughout the day. And that's, that's why they benefit, because it is slightly stand out from the rest. It can, it can receive the sun and the heat that it needs for the egg to develop. Right, okay, I suppose uh, from the viewer's point of view, this is difficult to figure out, but we're actually looking up into the tree right now. And I can see, in fact, from what you've shown me, this is the south-facing side, and it has got a lot of sun on it right now. So presumably that's quite good for the development of, uh, of, of the eggs in the spring and, uh, and the caterpillars later on. Yeah, definitely. Uh, because it does receive all the sun, the buds later on are really healthy and plump, which is exactly what the caterpillars need when they hatch. Fantastic. Right, now we've got to find this egg, haven't we? We do. <laughs> right, so this is a, a rather large oak. Is there any way that you can even begin to find a single egg on this? Well, you can uh, search at head height. There's a good chance of them, of them because they do come down. And uh, you want to look for the best, plumpest uh, buds, terminal auxiliary, near the tip of, near the, tip of the twigs. And uh, luckily, with a lot of searching, I found one and I've memorised exactly where it is. Well, I'm really pleased about that. But uh, uh, last week we went out, didn't we, to try and find uh, purple hair streaks. But it was terrible weather. So I'm so delighted you found something here. Let's have a look at it. Yeah. It is just at the tip of my finger here, my thumb. And, uh, you know... It's within reaching distance, which was really good, and it's uh, on the terminal bud. Okay, now it's my turn to have a look at this incredible egg. Now, if I hadn't been shown where it was, I would have imagined it would have almost be impossible for me to find it. Let me take my glasses off. And, right, oh my word, it is absolutely incredible. It's like a miniature sea urchin with incredible microstructure all over it. And in the middle, there's a central depression where I understand the caterpillar eats its way out. Uh, we'll put Jamie's photographs up with this so you can have a look for yourselves. But it really is worth the effort. How many hours did you put into this, Jamie, to find this? Uh, three hours. 
three hours for that one egg. Well, I think it's worth every single moment, actually. And the great thing about it is it, it, it's so small. It's rather like taking a pin, piercing a piece of paper, and the hole that's left is like the kind of size you're looking for, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. Fabulous. Um, there you are. Uh, purple hair streak egg. We'll really be interested if you find any of these while you're looking around and going for your country walks or uh, taking the dog out and deciding to have a look at an oak just for five minutes. So you can either send them to Butterflies of the Biosphere or you can send them to the Sussex Sightings page. Jamie, thank you so much for your time. Without you, I would never have seen that. You're welcome. Thank you. Take care.